So how does the Magna Carta protect us um, with what's happening? Well, it gives us a lawful, peaceful remedy. Article 61 is the security clause. It, it was designed in case the crown was ever usurped, and clearly it has been. So um, Article 61 tells us to reject the treasonous regime. We're defending the nation, we're defending our constitution, and we're defending our human rights. These are criminals posing as our government. So we are to deny them at all costs. So it is unlawful to vote. It's unlawful to pay taxes, fines, fees. It's unlawful to even follow these current lockdown regulations. It, it, it's a crime to actually put on that mask. The Magna Carta is a royal charter of rights agreed to by King John of England on June 15th in 1215. Article 61 of the Magna Carta was specifically put in place to protect us from tyrannical governments trying to exploit and take advantage of the people. Many people have been led to believe that the Magna Carta Article 61 is no longer effective. However, we have been misled because this is our protection against what is currently happening and they do not want us to use this to stop it all. I have interviewed a very remarkable woman who has devoted her life to educating people about the Magna Carta and is currently preparing as many people as possible for the invocation process which will give us our rights back and restore lawful governments. Thank you so much for being here today, Jackie. Uh, did you just want to introduce yourself and tell us how you got into this? Okay, um, I'm Jackie Phoenix. I'm from Alberta, Canada. Um, how I got into lawful descent. Well, I guess it started in 2001 when Article 61 was invoked. I did see them announce it on the nightly news in Canada. They did it right at the tail end of the newscast. So there's, they didn't do an actual story on it. They just said there's an important announcement coming out of England. The Barons Committee have invoked Article 61 of the 1215 Magna Carta. Good night, everyone. And that was it. Nothing was ever said about it again. And I was a little bewildered because an important announcement coming out of England that's that is important for all Commonwealth countries. We should have had more coverage on it, right? So I knew I knew how important it was. I just didn't know what it was or what it meant for the people, right? Um, <clears throat> so fast forward a few years, it just kind of slipped my mind. Then um, Canadians were in an uproar because of Justin Trudeau's globalist agenda, and um, I started getting involved with protests and things like that. That's when I came across a video on Facebook. A gentleman was getting rid of a solicitor that was at his door for council tax by um, stating that he was standing under Article 61 of the 1215 Magna Carta. And a little light bulb just went off. I remember those words. So I, I followed the video back to where it was posted, and that's how I found Practical Lawful Dissent in David Robinson. So I started trying to bring the message to Canadians, and I was actually attracting attention from other Commonwealth countries. So David started training me for international redress. Yeah, wow. And so David Robinson is the one who actually started Practical Lawful Dissent. Yes. Yeah. And he yes, trained yes. you and taught you everything. And now you're following his footsteps, I suppose. Yes. Yeah. What happened to David? Um, he passed away in November. Natural causes. So when, why was the article, Mag, uh, article 61 of the Magna Carta invoked? And who invoked it? Um, the Barons Committee invoked Article 61 because they, they looked at the Treaty of Nice and seen that it was a treasonous document.
they all are treasonous documents, but the Treaty of Nice is just the one that that sparked them into uh, invoking Article 61. It should have actually been invoked a long time ago. For those who don't know what that is or what role that is, can you explain who the barons are? They are considered the, the peers for the monarch. So we're supposed to be, be judged by a jury of our peers. And under Article 61, no one is above the law. So the head of state would be tried by the peers, the barons committee. Um, they, they all stem from the House of Lords. <clears throat> well, they did. They were actually thrown out of Parliament and the House of Lords for invoking Article 61 and giving the people remedy. Um, but it's, it's their job to oversee what the monarch is doing. And when the head of state is in violation of their coronation oath, it is their duty to invoke the security clause. When they invoked the security clause, well, did it have to pass through the Queen at all? Or how does yeah. it work? Yes, it has to follow constitutional protocols. So they petitioned the head of state to um, deny royal assent to the Treaty of Nice, which she didn't because she's been granting automatic royal assent since the 60s. That's why they're just throwing legislation at us left, right and center, because everything's been passed since the 60s. Um, so they had to petition the Queen. They gave her 40 days. She replied to them on the 39th day, stating that she didn't have the authority to, to withhold royal assent on the Treaty of Nice, which is an admission that the crown has been usurped. Because the, the whole role of the head of state is to protect the people's sovereignty and uphold our common law justice system, our court de jure, and that hasn't been done. Yeah, I know that they've taken the power away from the jury to regulate laws, especially when they breach human rights. And that is not a democracy. It's no one's regulating or controlling the government. It's like it's they're just sort of running the show now without that jury having those powers. Right. Yeah. 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 It, it's all about the jury nullification process. And so the reason why not many people know about this is because they hardly gave it any exposure um no, they've been purposely. trying to hide it from the people yeah yeah and i suppose is that why there's a lot of um a lot of people saying that the the magna carta doesn't stand today and 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 that it was it was signed under duress what do you have to say about people who say this oh. If they want to deny their own protection, then they're pretty foolish. I'll just say that to begin with. Um, all peace treaties are signed under some form of duress, and that's what our Magna Carta is. It's a peace treaty. King John was going to lose his throne regardless. So you can't really say he was under duress. He got on a horseback and rode out into a middle of an open field to meet the barons to seal Magna Carta. The, does that sound like the actions of someone who's in fear of their life? <laughs> it's, no. it's absolutely ludicrous. I've heard that the, that King Henry um, reissued the Magna Carta in, 19, in 1216, sorry. Again, that was all done treasonously for starters. The the head of state is supposed to be elected by the people. The, this bloodline lineage fraud is one of the biggest lies on humanity. It's a job. So King Henry was a nine-year-old child with the most important job on the planet. Again, it's ludicrous. Like I say to people, if, if you have a family member that needs life-saving surgery, are you going to find a qualified surgeon that specializes in that? Or are you going to go down to the pub and grab Joe because his grandfather was a surgeon? Or are you going to go grab little Tommy from the park because his father was a surgeon? It, it, it's absolutely ludicrous. A nine-year-old child does not have the forthwith to protect the people's sovereignty and uphold the rule of law. So yeah. 
chances are he had no idea what was actually happening. That's all null and void. And Magna Carta 1215 clearly states three times in Articles 1, Article 61, and Article 63 that it is a forever binding document. So even even with it stating that it's forever binding within Article 61, like people that are trying to deny the Magna Carta and their only protection from this treasonous regime, they're not thinking clearly. They've had too much fluoride or something. Yeah, I mean, this is what is protecting us and our human rights. And to deny that. Exactly. It's called the security clause. It's a no-brainer right there. Yeah. You know. And and how many countries are involved in the practical lawful dissent? Or how many can be involved? Is it for every country? Or how does it work? Um, It's for all Commonwealth and former Commonwealth countries. But we do have a lot of non-Commonwealth support in the group. I think there's um, 94 countries that are involved in our group. But I think it's only uh, approximately 70 that it actually applies to. Wow, that's a lot of involvement. <laughs> and, yeah. And in relation to Australia, like, how does it work with the Barons community? Do we have one here or is the one in UK representing us? Or? The one in the UK represents the entire Commonwealth. Okay. We are all one land. And that's that's another thing. They've been using the, the Statute of Westminster to um, try to separate the colonies from England. That's just one of the documents they're trying to separate the colonies. See, they've got uh, Australia thinking they're their own Commonwealth when really Australia is Australia, right? Yeah. So it, it's just it's just all lies. They, they've been trying to um, deceive the people into thinking that we're not part of England because they don't want us using the protection that we have. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I know there was a referendum and they tried to get rid of the Queen, but we never agreed. They're acting like we don't have a Queen or whatever. She was fired on March 25th. 2001 when they when they invoked the Magna Carta yeah okay yes well if you can't do your job then you get fired right again it's a (laughs) no-brainer and so how does the Magna Carta protect us um, with what's happening well it gives us a lawful peaceful remedy article 61 is the security clause it it was designed in case the crown was ever usurped and clearly it has been. So um, article 61 tells us to reject the treasonous regime. We're defending the nation. We're defending our constitution and we're defending our human rights. These are criminals posing as our government. So we are to deny them at all costs. So it is unlawful to vote. It's unlawful to pay taxes, fines, fees. It's unlawful to even follow these current lockdown regulations. It's a crime to actually put on that mask. This is all treason by the leaders and the governments of our countries. Is that correct? And what is treason? Treason is any foreign prince, power, or entity having any say in our laws or governance without us first being defeated in open battle. So they're using the Roman Admiral Law of Commerce in our common law court jurisdictions. So right there, that is treason because it's a foreign law, right? The United yeah. Nations is a foreign entity, a foreign power. They sh- they shouldn't be involved at all. Same with the European Union. But the EU is the UN. So yeah. just the fact that, that we're dealing with enti- foreign powers like that is, is high treason right there. Another thing that is high treason is when somebody immigrates to our land, they are not supposed to run for public office until they are seven generations here. So um, I know in Canada, we've got people 
immigrating to Canada and immediately running for office. So that's high treason. So you could say that treason is probably the worst crime to commit because it, it endangers a whole country, a whole nation of people. Yes, treason is the worst possible crime that can be committed. It's even worse than murder because it is the death of an entire nation. In this case, it's 70 plus countries. Wow. <laughs> and what is the punishment of treason? Uh, the penalty for treason is a full asset stripping and the gallows. Let's go back to the um, invoke of the security clause of the Magna Carta 61. What is the process once this is invoked? What what do we need to do to um, follow through and execute it in the correct manner? Um, well, it starts by taking the oath. A lot of people are confused on the oath. Um, it's actually just a document of intent. Because Article 61 is the only law in effect, how do you prove that you're obeying that law? You create a document of intent. That's what the oath is. So it is our evidence that we are in fact obeying the law. Once we take the oath, we have a five notice process that we use. And that notifies them that treason has been committed the security clause is in effect and it compels them to stand with us because we all have a duty to stand under Article 61 once it has been invoked. We are the many, they are the few. So um, we use that five notice process to hold government accountable. Every single person that we put on notice will stand trial for treason at a later date once we get redressed. And Article 61 is an unstoppable force. It will remain the only law in effect until the rule of law is restored and juries are back in our courtrooms with full jury nullification. So once we take the oath, we collect the evidence of their crimes. And then uh, from there, we take lawful action. But I can't really get into that too much mm -hmm. right now because uh, we're we're getting ready to do that. Yeah. So Australians need to to be ready. They need to get their numbers up, get people under oath, get your groundwork done. We call it the three C's: cops, courts, councils. They all need to be put on notice. From there, you can uh, put any politician on notice, MPs, government whips, anyone in the judiciary, ready for the call to action because it's coming very soon. Yeah, this is urgent and this is why I really want to have this talk with you and put it out there because I really want people to understand the significance of this. And in my opinion and from what I've looked into, this to me is the answer to all that's happening right now and the way out. The only thing that I think about is, so we are claiming that the, the governments have, have committed treason, which is, which are, have serious consequences and I feel like they will not go down without a fight like push back in some way to to what we're trying to do how I know laws with laws you, you need they need to be enforced by someone so how can we have that support by other that, uh, that's what the whole that's what the whole <coughs> call to action is about yeah okay. because that's the thing there's more of us than there is of them. Simple. Yeah. It's a numbers game. We have to do our part. Article 61 is an instruction manual. It was, it was written in 1215. It is the security clause and it is forever binding. They had to write it like an instruction manual so that future generations like us would know what to do. Mm -hmm. So it all starts with taking that oath and collecting the evidence and then be ready for the call to action. And the call to action is very simple. It's very lawful and it's very peaceful. The, simplic the simplicity of it all is, is what's beautiful, right? So I can't really get into too much about the call to action on here but um yeah 
get involved. The We've got uh, Australian admins that are more than happy to help prepare people and get them ready for what needs to be done. But it's got to be coordinated. It's got to be unified. And it's got to be all of us. So that's the thing. It Because it applies to 70 countries, we need to do, we need to unite together. We are all one land. We have to unite as one land. So Australia needs to do this with the UK, as well as Canada, New Zealand, all the Commonwealth countries need to get involved and work together on this. I know in the past with the, the First Nations people and the Indigenous, they've had really bad experiences um, and they obviously have some issues around trusting. Um, what does a Magna Carta mean for them? Like, where do they fit in with the Magna Carta? They're all part of it, I'm assuming, as well? Yes, yes. They're protected by it too. And I can see where their um, resistance is, you know, even in in Canada with the Indigenous. The Canadians, they they have a hatred for the monarchy and the United Kingdom because in 1963, Elizabeth and Philip came to Canada and they took 10 Native children from a residential school and those children were never seen again. So that has caused a huge rift in, in the country. And, and I know that the Indigenous throughout all of the colonies were treated poorly. So I can see their resistance there. But this is actually a blessing in disguise. The colonies might have been colonized under treasonous means, but we have the protection of the Constitution because of that. So it's kind of like, a blessing in, dis in disguise, and it does protect them. Um, Article 61, when we take the oath, we are changing our allegiance from the crown to the constitution. When it comes to the indigenous, they don't, they never had that allegiance in the first place. So they don't technically have to take the oath, but they can still stand at our side. So, um, I do encourage them to take the oath and use the process because it, it does better protect them. And, and it shows unity of the people itself, right? And that's the thing, it's us versus them. The government has declared war on its people. Treason is a war crime. So they have declared war on the people. Article 61 is our sword and our shield in this war. and. And yes, they need to stand, the Indigenous need to stand with the rest of the people on this one. We are all protected by the Magna Carta. We need to unify. The only two things that the government fears is Article 61 and unity of the people. We need to do both. So how many people need to be involved? As many as humanly possible. Yeah. We should have, everybody should be under oath. Once, once we do the call to action, people are going to wake up real quickly because they're going to see actual things happening. So, yeah. but they need to be involved sooner than that because the more, the more of an impact we can make on the day of redress, the better. Yeah. And this is what I often think and say is, you know, you can go to protests, you can you know, try and get control of your fictitious entity or legal fiction and get yourself out of the system. But this is a collaborative thing. And this is more powerful than anything. And, and if we have unity and everyone following this process and on board with this, this is the answer and this will stop to what we are current, where we are currently heading, you know, to a tyrannical exactly. government. And, and protests don't do anything. They don't do anything. They just get ignored. They don't care. People are protesting on a Saturday when nobody's even in the building. <laughs> so you're standing there chanting in an empty building. What good is that going to do? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, and those who want to um, get themselves out of this system by claiming their legal fiction, 
Okay, well, that's fine and dandy for you. But what about the rest of us? It's a yeah. form of aiding and abetting because you're saying you can't do this to me, but it's okay to do it to my neighbor. Yeah. It doesn't stop anything. Yeah. You're allowing it to happen. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's where I'm at right now is, you know, I can go through all these processes and take myself out, but what about my fellow people, you know, my family, my friends, everyone else, they're going to be stuck in that. So they don't know what to do. They don't know how to how to deal with it. So I've made that conscious. This is why this really appeals to me and resonates with me so much because it's a unity thing. And yeah. that's what we and need. And it's so most simple powerful. too. It's yeah. so simple. Yeah. And we need that reset, that, that, that clean out and to just start again with integrity and ethics. And yeah, it's, it, it's an amazing time to be alive as, as stressful <laughs> as it is. But yeah. it's, also, it's also beautiful because we're seeing people unite and this is a revolution and we're living it. So, yeah. Yeah, we're definitely making history on this one. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I did see David Robinson's uh, video of when he took over the building. It was sort of like he was kind of testing and, and to prove that it was so easy and possible. And um, he yeah. ended up taking over for a few hours and then the police came and like, well, you're not doing anything wrong. And they left them there. And then they ended up leaving after a few hours. So, Well, the, the reason they, they surrendered the building was because one building is not going to be enough to restore the rule of law throughout the entire Commonwealth. And David seized it on a spur of the moment. So he didn't have provisions or things like that for a long-term stay. Right yeah so yeah <laughs> but they could have they could have taken the keys off of the caretaker yeah. but they chose not to yeah and I, i've seen that you've been attacked by the the fake news <laughs> <laughs> oh i know isn't isn't it nice that the regime gives me free publicity <laughs> i know right i always say the ones who get attacked um it's validating that what they're saying is they like it's, it's dangerous to the agenda so it's like i'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna go for that person that they're on the right track here <laughs> oh i know the the first um mainstream media article in canada where the judge attacked me in the national post that first article got me a supreme court judge from australia <laughs> <laughs> wow. we've got the silent, yeah we've got the silent majority the the supreme court judge from australia read that article and he was like yeah <laughs> nice they shot themselves in the foot there i guess hey <laughs> yeah yeah um, but yeah so, we, we've got yeah. the silent majority we've got um members of all levels of government and the judiciary and law enforcement that are are standing with the people they don't usually comment in the group and stuff like that they're pretty pretty silent that's why we call them the silent majority but they're waiting for their day when they can safely stand with the people that's i hear great. from the silent majority more than anybody else does because they ask me questions and things like that they contact me directly um about a week before david passed he did a post in the group about the boys and girls in blue being traitors. And it caused me an, a nightmare for four days. I had my phone was constantly going off from cops throughout the Commonwealth. I'm not a traitor. I'm not a traitor. <laughs> so, <Wow>. yeah. <laughs> That's so reassuring. And um, yeah, it just gives me a lot of faith. Um, but I, I do I do believe that there are a lot out there aware of what's going on. They're just waiting, waiting for the right time. Yeah. And that's the thing. Those that work within the system, they know that the system is corrupt, but they don't know what to do about it. You know, these are people that are just trying to feed their families. You know, it's they ended up taking a job that they probably shouldn't have. But, you know, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. So this this is a, a good way for them to be able to stand with the people. Yeah. And what do you think of common law sheriffs? Like, I wouldn't mind being one, but is it possible? Or? Well, 
hopefully we're not going to need them because hopefully the police will get off their asses and do their jobs. <laughs> yeah. You know, like and we, we've got campaigns for the police too. We've got posters that we've been putting up lobbying the police because we do need them to do their jobs. Yeah. I'm not sure if you heard here, but there was um, a group, um, Cops for COVID Truth, and a lot of cops signed up to this because they saw the absolute hypocrisy in all of it all and, and the corruption. And so that yeah. was really positive. So so, so if people in Australia want to start this process and, and um, swear the oath and, and, and send their notices, where can they go? And what is there? Well, who are the people that help out with this? Or is there anyone that's doing what you're doing here? Yes, we've got um, a Facebook group set up for Australians, Practical Lawful Descent International Australia. You can go to the international group to Practical Lawful Descent International. So either one will will happily assist. And we've also got one set up for New Zealand as well. 